Stage two ready and waiting. Bring it on, girls. Okay, the fabricator does exactly what it says on the tin. Am I naked in front of millions of viewers? Absolutely. Ladies, your viewing figures just went up. And now it's time for the face-off. What does that mean? Do I get to compete with someone else? No, like I said, face off. I think you look good with a dog's head. Or maybe no head at all. That would be so outrageous. And we could stitch your legs to the middle of your chest. Nothing is too extreme. It's to die for. Now hold on, ladies. I don't want to have to shoot either one of you. But you're unarmed. You're naked. But that's... An M61 Vulcan. Where were you hiding that? You really don't want to know. Give me that accessory. The Phantom FGR-2 is an American-made Rank 6 BR-10.3 fighter ground attacker aircraft that was chucked into the British 3 and serves to stop us upper-class toffs crying on the forums about the life. The F-4 Phantom 2 was obviously used by so many fucking countries that it's impossible to make a video about all of them. And frankly I can't be asked to research the US one, so load your sushi burgers meal deals at when they add the German one sausages, because this guide will be applicable to all leading distributors of MiG parts. The Brits took the standard F-4J and replaced its J-79 engine no! that produced more smoke than the working man's lungs on a fat break with the Rolls-Royce Spade, which turned out to be so big they had to make the plane fatter and had to be angled downwards for carrier usage. And to top it all off the FGR-2 version is the Air Force's variant, meaning it had no need for angled carrier takeoff engines. History lesson over, how does the Anglo-American fat fucker fly in the game? The Phantom weighs 25 tons which is heavier than the weight of the English economy carrying the other three countries, and yet the twin spay engines deliver a maximum of 9000 kg force of thrust each, meaning that it accelerates incredibly quickly particularly at low altitude, and has a maximum speed of over 1400 miles an hour at 10 km. So in short, it climbs excellently, but you don't want to fight against MiG-21s at high altitude as you literally weigh twice as much as them so only turn at high speeds and low altitude. So it turns like a brick, but runs like Churchill going for another whiskey. What about the armament? The Phantom has a variety of payloads and unfortunately it is the weakest out of its international brothers, with all other Phantoms getting better bomb loadouts and not useless rockets, as well as the E&DJ which have the latest sidewinders. So, what do you get to play with? The primary weapon is the N61 Vulcan Minigun pod strapped to the bottom of the tank like a refugee fleeing to the UK from the war zone known as France, and when fully upgraded this is an excellent cannon with a fast rate of fire and 1200 rounds to burn. The only downsides being that it has more drag than Brighton on a Saturday night and needs time to spin up, as well as gauge and not deciding if it should be angled, at 1 degree or not. In terms of bombs you have a maximum of 8, 1000 pound teapots which equates to 2 destroyed bases or 4 enemy tanks. And as you've strapped an Oxford graduate into the plane to do big maths you can utilize a ballistics computer to give you a bomb reticule as well as a cannon drop marker. However what you almost use are the homing sausage rolls, and before Piers Morgan starts shitting himself, these definitely are not vegan. The AIM-90 is an advanced variant of the earlier 9B, and yet unlike the 9A, cannot be slaved to your radar, meaning they are generally short range missiles, to be used at around 3 kilometers. but thankfully this is the end of the downsides as they have 16G of overload which will force enemy communists to either lose a shit ton of speed, or they'll feel the sheer power of Margaret Thatcher. So, how do you fly the best crossover between the US and UK since Canada? To start. Take the cannon, the sausage rolls and the box to dump on a base if that's your thing, or tell them to fuck off. Load the air belts for your 20 mil, load minimum fuel if you're bad and maximum fuel if you're competent. You are a NAS car wrapped up in a union jack, so you do not turn except for long distance vertical ones to re-engage near mortals who think they can fuck with you, and as such speed is your best weapon. The FDR is best at low altitude at 2 to 4 kilometers, and as such you want to gain speed to above Mach 1. Engage shit VFs head on and loop around for another attempt. Alternatively you can use your excellent climb rate to get to ridiculous altitudes but this is very risky as here beaming territory. 
so don't stick around for long and utilize it as a boom and an aircraft if necessary. In ground are below the 8 1000 pound bombs and either climb high to dunk on tanks using the ballistics computer or come and low and fast to avoid sacks. But never be a fucking centrist and take a middle approach because that guy you just killed is spawning in his adats right now. Oh it looks like the phantom might get the aim 9G in the future and if you're watching this, use that shit my man. Now a word on fighting MiG-21s. Most other planes can be effectively fought against in a dogfight, but these things are absolute cunts. Your only real option is to crack open a speller and run towards him head on, because if he gets behind you it'll look like 1956 all over again. So use cloud cover to hide from the bastard R60s and use your pork products to make him lose speed. Hopefully you now won't suffer a big related extreme emotional event. What upgrades do you take? Firstly take Tesco fireworks to throw at elderly people's faces, followed by explosive T-bots to dunk on leopard spam and boosters to avoid impacting the ground. Then the 20 nil belts to beat your child after too much whiskey and the useless rocket. Then steal some homing sausage rolls from a lockdown Greg's. Once you have got the G-suit, make sure your pilot can operate it properly and arrange for heart surgery because goddamn he's larger than the plane. And once you have done these steps, you may do whatever the fuck you please. By following these simple steps you will find that this is the correct way to play the Phantom FDR 2. Now go out there and make the 13 colonies subservient to the crown again.